This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Oh, yeah. Hello, everybody. How are you? It's Alex Bennett, and this, of course, is The Ramble. It goes on, as always, until midnight Eastern Daylight Time, and uh, we're live. Uh, if you're listening to us at about uh, 10.05, 10.06 uh, on the East Coast of the United States, or, a, or 7.05 on the West Coast of the United States, and anywhere else in the world, just adjust for that, and you can uh, be part of this little uh, melange. Okay? Uh, listen, we got a guest tonight, so we should get to that right now. Ladies and gentlemen, political pundit, now you don't like to be called pundit, the political uh, 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 a comedian. Comic. Comic. Why, why do you prefer comic to pundit to any of the other attributes that may be given you because of your wise acerbic quality? No, no, it's just uh, the way the word sounds. Comedian is too soft. Comic. A comic. I like comic. A comic, a comic. Yeah, yeah. See, I, I just like the, the way it sounds. In the background, sound. you're watching Turner Classic movies, aren't you? I am indeed. Yeah. That's uh, and people can uh, go back and figure out uh, what we're, uh, what time we're doing this because uh, this is Cosmic Monster with uh, Forrest uh, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> is that your go-to station when nothing else is on? I watch uh, baseball. Yeah. Uh, watch the news, and I watch Turner Classic movies. Yeah. Well, now you're the guy to talk to, I guess, about the current uh, 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 conundrum we have with our president, because you like sports. Like he's an idiot. Remember? Yeah. You like no. sports. Yes, and now he's uh, he's taking out NFL players, but it's not about race. No, no. That's <laughs> not about race. It's about respecting uh, the flag in our country and uh, our military and our first responders. Yeah. Fuck yeah. you. <laughs> well, I know. I, I you know I got to tell you something. This country is now so polarized that it's it's it goes beyond anything I ever remember. I mean, even the Vietnam War, which Ken Burns describes as a civil war in America. Uh, I don't think created the same kind of animosity between sides that Trump has created. I mean, he literally is is an agitator. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's 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 his idea of leadership is to galvanize his side, reward them, reward uh, the the people who voted for him by. Telling them that their prejudices are right, and that I mean, it's like he wants to be the president of Alabama. Well, let me show you how much it polarizes people. Yesterday, I I put a post up on my Facebook page, and it said, "Fuck the American flag, fuck the national anthem." You know, the real hero is the guy who will kneel during that and use his his ability to protest which is the purest of the American rights. And uh, I lost about 15 Facebook friends. Oh, really? And about 20 followers who just decided, I don't want to hear what Alex has to say. Oh, well, how could he say, fuck the American flag? How? You know, it's a piece of cloth and it's a silly song. All right? <laughs> you know, and to, to suddenly hold that up as a, well... A religious object. Yeah, that's it, what they're doing. You know, is yeah. ridiculous. You can't tarnish this. Is ridiculous. Oh, don't run. I mean, even um, uh, who uh, Antonin Scalia, who was maybe the most conservative of the of the chief justices we ever had, voted for the right of people to burn the flag. It's a First Amendment right. Yeah. Exercising your First Amendment. Yeah, but. Nevertheless, I mean, uh, I'd fire the son of a bitch. What? Why? You know, 
I mean, I quite frankly, I don't like the idea that they kneel for it because that's kind of a sign of obedience. I mean, don't you kneel in front of a queen? Don't you kneel in in if, in prayer? In church. You in know. church, yeah, yeah. Kneeling is showing reverence too. So I don't understand their. Uh, it they're just not standing because you know? these guys are nose breathers. <laughs> You know, I mean, uh, 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 I, it just makes no sense to me at all. And the fact that, and then he, he makes a big deal out of the fact of, you know, all these all these political pundits of the right are saying, oh, well, you know, I mean, they're insulting the flag and blah, 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 and so on and so forth. And how can it, well, the, the protests on Sunday weren't about Black Lives Matter, which is the reason why Kaepernick first took the knee. Right? Right. Uh, it was about Trump. And it happened because Trump opened his big fucking mouth about something that has nothing to do with the presidency. He should have been talking about Puerto Rico. He should have been talking about North Korea. He should have been talking about things which are important, not a fucking football game. Get that son of a bitch off the field. Yeah, yeah. He's out of here. He's fired. He, that's the only thing. He likes to say that. He's fired. Oh, that's my catchphrase. He's fired. Only comedians have catchphrases. <laughs> <clears throat> no, he does. Yeah, yeah. He, he just likes to fire people. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he fires everybody. He fires uh, the FBI director, assistant uh, attorney generals, I mean, uh, attorneys general. He uh, he fired. He fire. I can't wait for him to fire his family. Get, get rid of Ivanka. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, uh, it, it's just why he involves himself in these kinds of arguments is beyond me. They're not presidential. I've never heard. Have you ever heard any president ever publicly use the term "son of a bitch"? <laughs> uh, I think he didn't say "son of a bitch." I think he said "sob." No, he said. Oh, did he say "sob"? I think, yeah. I thought. I'm I, pretty I, sure. I, I have I, to look at the the tape. Yeah, let's go back to the videotape. Yeah, let's do our <laughs> analysis of the play. <coughs> you know, I mean, I don't. I I know. I, he he wants to be the president of Alabama. He he's he's sucking up the people's prejudices, and you know this is something that people have always been talking about since 1968, when Tommy Smith and uh, what's his name held up their arms at yeah. the Olympics, and that's always been a, a thing that white guys have complained about you know they've always complained about black guys in sports and how they've changed sports so he's hooked into a vein that he knows is is rich for his kind of uh, uh, sneaky racism yeah well I I just I just find it appalling that you know that that we spent an entire weekend having to deal with this, but almost right. every team. Am I right? I mean, you follow sports more than I do, but almost every team to a to a man was involved in some kind of protest over this over the weekend. No, not a, no. Every team had, but it never before. No, no weekend before had every team had to confront this. Most teams, and you had owners linking arms with their players. You had coaches. But about a hundred, there's 53 players on 33 teams. Okay. 32 teams. Yeah. So there's, uh, I don't know what 53 times uh, 32 is, but it's about 1,600. So there's 1,600 okay. players, and about a hundred of them actually got involved in some sort of protest. The Pittsburgh Steelers uh, stayed inside the locker room, except one guy who came out of the locker room and he was photographed and he he had he had to apologize for throwing his teammates under the bus but he thought they were following him <laughs> so there's there's all sorts of stuff that's going on uh, I see I think the whole kneeling thing I think that shows reverence yeah I that, think that's why I don't get it you know 
Uh, but because it, it, but it was meant as a hostile gesture to the, to the president. I mean, many of the owners were linking arms, you know, with the other players, uh, not exactly doing the kneel, but you know, still it's a protest. Uh, and and uh, it, it was it was more of a protest about Trump than a protest over uh, the uh, 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 over. Uh, in support of Kaepernick, it, yeah. Yeah, in support of Kaepernick or Kaepernick's support of Black Lives Matter, okay? That's where it began. It was over Black Lives Matter and over their stand that the police were being brutal and so on and so forth. This case, they did it just to say, fuck you, Donald Trump. Yeah, right. this was, this was more about that than it was about the other, yeah. And, and then they say, well, how can they do that to our president? He brought it on himself. Keep your fucking mouth shut. Now, I'm not telling him he shouldn't exercise his his rights, okay? But he really shouldn't exercise his rights on things that aren't presidential, okay? He shouldn't use that same bully pulpit he would use as the, the host of The Apprentice, for instance, right? Well, when they taught bully pulpit at Trump University, the focus was pretty much on the first two syllables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I I just I just am amazed personally that, that this whole thing became such a big deal over the weekend. But what I'm more amazed by is the Facebook factor, the fact that I said something like that, and people who disagreed with me rather than disagree with me just unfriended me in droves. I mean, like about ten, fifteen of them. Okay. With friends like that, you don't need enemies. Well, I mean, it weeds out the the, the stupid, you know, uh, and and that's for damn sure. But it makes me once again say, I don't think I'm ever going to say anything on Facebook ever again. Uh, I mean, I'm tired of every time I give my opinion, suddenly there are people who go, oh, I don't want to be part of this. I'm not going to follow him. I'm not going to be friends with him. Goodbye rather than listen to what I have to say or contemplate it or say, hey, Alex has the right to say that. I disagree with him. He's being really stupid in this case, which is fine. Tell me that. Write it down. Say, hey, you're an idiot. But Who cares? Either either they either they enjoy it or they don't. You know, yeah. If they go, they go. What's yeah. the big deal? So you know? I've, I've, oh. just, I've just decided. Oh, if you're going to go because of this, go. Go now. I'm not going to comment on, uh, on on Facebook anymore. I'll comment on Twitter where I don't get a lot of people saying you're an asshole. You know? <laughs> and where if they all want to leave me, I can buy more users. <laughs> more, <laughs> you, know? you can buy users? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have uh, four, uh, 46,000 followers on Twitter. 46,000? Yeah, but I bought 40,000 of them. <laughs> did, you, <laughs> did you really? Yes. For how long? Uh, forever. Or until they decide to go bye bye, and they're usually, they, most of them have unpronounceable names from other countries. <laughs> I don't know how they do it, but one day I decided, oh, you know, it, what was happening is companies, radio companies, were going, let's see how many face Twitter followers he has, forty nine thousand. Let's hire him, you know. And the fact is, that forty nine thousand was like, you know. <laughs> it was. It was yeah, I would. Say, I would say maybe I bought. Maybe I bought thirty thousand. Oh wow! Yeah. So yeah. you still so, have nineteen thousand so real I'll followers. I'll say stuff on Twitter. Fuck it. I'm not going to lose them. I paid for them. You know. <laughs> and if after <laughs> within a year, <laughs> within a year, if you lose any, they will replenish. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know where they get them from. I don't care. It's just it's just people are stupid enough to say, "Oh, you've got that many Twitter followers. You must be popular." I could right. buy a million of them if I wanted to. If I wanted to put out the money for it. How much is it? What was it costing? It's something like for like twenty five thousand or something. Costs like twenty bucks or something. <laughs> Now you can't buy Facebook friends. No, right? It, you it, only have five thousand Facebook friends. Yeah, yeah, and then you. But then I also have these pages that are not friend pages, right? So, 
Anyway, it, it's it's absurd. It is just absurd. Uh, and I, I, I've gotten to the point where on Facebook I'm just saying, eh, I'm not going to even say anything anymore. I'm not even going to participate in my Facebook page. Uh, I, I might even blank out, make, make it so nobody can post anything on my Facebook page, and I'll just do my Facebook Live show every night, four nights uh, a week, uh, and put it up there. Is that what you do? Mm -hmm. You do Facebook Live? Yeah, that's what this is. I mean, we're, this is a video we're doing, and it's going to be on the show tonight. You know? Oh, cool. Yeah. So, I mean, I do, yeah, I do Facebook Live every night because it gets me more viewers and listeners than, than my uh, stream does, my audio stream does. Because what happens is with Facebook, whenever you, if, if you have followers, and I have something like almost 2,000 followers, um, that's different. On from your friends. fan page. Yeah. No, not on fan page. On the regular page, you also can get followers. Oh. Okay. So I have like almost 2,000 followers, and I have like 5,000 friends. So obviously my friends don't want to follow me. Uh, <laughs> and so all They've seen where you've gone before. When, I, when you go on with the video, all those followers get a notification that you've gone live. Uh. So, yeah, so then you get a nice little chunk of people. So, I mean, that's why I do it. But I, I'm, I'm through... With just even posting, I, today's my birthday and I feel good about it. I, I'm not even doing that. Forget it. I'm, I'm just not posting. Today's um, not your birthday. No, it's not. But I uh. said, if, if, if it were, I would not put that up there. Right? Uh. Now you're going to watch a movie in the background called The Green Slime. I wonder if I can get sued for this. Oh, wow. I love The Green Slime. You, you love The Green Slime? I love The Green Slime. What's, what's it about? The I Green no Slime. Idea. <laughs> that I, I, which is probably green because it's in color. They're what, making what, use. What, 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 the what, monster was not in color. What is the day to day on on TCM? Just cheapo uh, movies, cheapo sci fi that's, movies. That's today. They always do themes. Every yeah. day they do a theme. Yeah, yeah. And and today must be cheapo fifties uh, uh, monster movies. Yeah. You know what I hate? I got FiOS, which I love. I think FiOS is terrific. You know. F I O S. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's uh, um, a Verizon, uh, and they have FiOS, which is fiber optic cable coming into my house. Uh, fiber I, fiber optic coming in right back in in back of this desk. Going, okay, going to my modem, going to the TV around the house, um, and it, it's really it's really quite terrific. I have like a, a gigabyte up and a gigabyte down for speed. It's amazing, but. TCM, and it's been this way for years on FiOS in spite of thousands of complaints, hundreds of thousands of complaints, is in, isn't in high def. And you get like, on a widescreen picture, you get like that letterbox in the middle of the picture. Yeah, the bar, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and you go, what, you can't put this on a high def channel? I mean, what's it going to cost you? And in spite of the fact, I mean, I went online, there were just tons of protests. Why it doesn't foster this? And it goes back four or five years. And they, no. they, they don't do it. Oh, well, most of those movies are not in high def. You know, they're old, old uh, grainy black and white films. No, they're not. They're running a lot of, like, post-1950s, which are all widescreen. Yeah, CinemaScope. Yeah, so, fuck them. Fuck them. Another thing... What? Have you seen any movies lately? Not really. There's nothing out there, really. You know, and and what there is out there, and I always argue this with my with my wife, is yeah, we can go see that movie you want to see, but it's going to be on cable within three months. You know, and now I don't the big you know Wonder Woman things like that. I like to go to the theater because you got the sound, and even though I have the Did sound, you see there, Wonder Woman? Yeah. Yeah, huh. yeah, but I mean, it, you, you know, you got the sound. It's kind of an audience picture, you know, where the audience kind of is a shared experience. But you know, I don't need to go see some story about two people falling in love and writing love letters to each other on the big screen. Huh. I can huh. wait for it to be seen at home. But no, she has to go. Oh, well, uh, we all want to go see, but uh, you know, love letters or whatever, you know, some the Notebook. All right, we'll sit in the theater and we'll watch two people talk to each other for two hours. 
you know. Yeah, I like shit that blows up real good. Yeah, I want I want the, the something that's a theatrical experience. Yeah. You know. Uh, recently they did um, uh, Dunkirk. And I thought that was good on the big screen because you could go. I, we didn't see it this way, but it was filmed in IMAX. Yeah. And you could yeah. go see it on the big screen. You get the full experience. Uh, and, and I understand that. Okay. And so it's worth going to a theater for it. But it is worth going to a theater to see, you know, Julianne Moore and her latest Sob Sister movie. <laughs> yeah. Actually, she's in the, the newest Kingsman. She's in the second yeah. Kingsman. Yeah. Well, they all do those movies now. You know, yeah. They, they, it, 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 if Lawrence Olivier were alive, he'd be starring in a Marvel film. You know, of course he. Actually, of course they, he is. Hey, do you remember uh, 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 Captain Tomorrow and the Sky Captain? Well, I love no. that film. That was one of our first date films, my girlfriend and I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I love that film, and they used Lawrence Olivier as the bad guy. Did, Remember that? Did Sky Captain World of Tomorrow? Did they really? Oh, yes, but it, well, he was dead already. Yeah. And they did it digitally. Yeah. Yeah. So he was in a movie. Yeah, yeah so he was in a movie. Uh, no, well, no, he did. Look, he, he did a lot of shitty movies. Uh, he did a lot of yeah. those kind of movies. He did uh, uh, Clash of the Titans. He's the one that says, bring out the Kraken or whatever that line yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, release the Kraken. Release the Kraken. So, you know, Lawrence Olivier, in the end of his life, said, hey, i got to make a few bucks here before I croak. Well, and, you know, they ran up so many debts by drinking. Y yeah, exactly. So, My favorite story about that is uh, Sean Connery. Yeah. Sean Connery was offered uh, Gandalf in uh, the Hobbit movies, you know, mm -hmm. and he was, uh, and he turned it down, and then he was offered another part, and he said he turned down all these parts because he didn't understand them, and they went on to be hugely successful. So that's why he took the part in League of uh, Extraordinary well, actually, Gentlemen. Actually, the reason he did League of Extraordinary Gentlemen yeah. was he produced it. Oh, he did? Yeah, yeah, he produced it, so he put himself in it to... You know, help it sell. It didn't sell. <laughs> it, it was not a very successful film. I happen to no, like the film. Not at all. It's an awful movie. And it's, uh, you know, and Alan Moore, of course, uh, disowned it. Of course, he disowned Watchmen, which is a great movie. Mm -hmm. And he also disowned V for Vendetta, which is a great movie. So, yeah. It's just Alan Moore. Yeah. Have you seen any of the new TV shows this season? No. What's out? Well, there's Star Trek Discovery. No, oh, Debbie saw it, and she liked it, according to her I, Facebook I, I, I watched it once and went, eh. And then I watched it a second time, and I went, ah. You know, oh, really? But, but the thing is, the first two episodes set up the series, which is nothing like what the two pilot episodes are about. Oh, really? They destroy the ship in the first two, in the first two pilot episodes. And then they say they're sending her to prison the lead character. And then it's going to take off. Then she's going to be assigned to a ship, and that's going to be the storyline. Okay? So she doesn't go to prison. It's, it, apparently not. Apparently somebody wanted her a lot. Uh, for, uh, maybe, and maybe it's called the Starship Discovery. And, <laughs> but, but they've never gotten to that point. This is just the whole setup of the of the show so it's not what the show is going to be it doesn't even have the uh, other lead characters in it you know so it it's gonna and be, then you have to buy cbs all access yeah yeah where and you can get it otherwise too you know there are, it's on netflix in europe oh really yeah yeah already yeah so you can imagine that somewhere on the internet you can find a copy of it yeah yeah <laughs> What else have you seen? I watched Young Sheldon, the Big Bang oh, Theory that? prequel. I, it's cute, you know. Uh, it, it's not as good as I thought it would be, and it's not as bad as it could have been. So you can wait and see. You know, pilots are always, you know, never... If you go back and look at the pilot of any show, you go, oh, really? I mean, Seinfeld, the pilot, wow. You know? <coughs> They're sitting in a... Yeah, it's not it, until the second year that they really get their feet. Uh, Thing is, you got to get through the first year to get to a second Actually, year. it took Seinfeld, 
I think, more than two years to get to its feet because the first two seasons were only six episodes. Oh, really? Yeah. And then they finally committed to a full slate, and then they started, you know, really finding themselves. You know, so. Seinfeld was the worst tested film, the show, rather, in the history of show testing. You know, oh. they, they have these theaters where they bring people in and then they have, they have buzzers whether they like a scene or don't like a scene or whatever. And uh, it got, it literally, he has, a, he supposedly has the, the assessment on his wall framed in which it says, this is the lowest rated show we've ever had in our theater. Uh, and it, it has absolutely no chance of making it. Well, he was shooting ahead of the audience, and the rest of the audience behind hit them yeah. caught up. Yeah, yeah. So, so he was shooting ahead, and the generation of audience, the kids who were teenagers and becoming 20-year-olds, they're the ones who really enjoyed him. Well, you know, I was watching, uh, Seinfeld did a thing called Seinfeld Before Seinfeld on Netflix, which is a his stand-up act, and what he's doing is using all the material... That uh, that he it, it was his old material. He he resuscitated it, and was doing. I'm turning up my volume a little bit because I don't have a lot of volume here. Uh, uh, he resuscitated it and um, uh, repurposed, repurposed, he repurposed it, and used it to tell the story of his life. Right, and and he tells the first joke he ever told, and then he tells another joke. He says, "By the way, that was the second one I ever wrote." And, and it's all very interesting. And all I could think about with Seinfeld was the fortuitous moment was the day he met Larry David. Because together they became the Lennon and McCartney of comedy. Yeah. You know, they created something just extraordinary and, and amazing. Uh, and, and those shows are, are really terrific. Do you know, I'm looking here at this clock and we've already done 25 minutes. Oh, Jesus, already? I, I can't believe it. Yeah, yeah, already. Let me just, let's take a few more minutes here and we'll finish the whole thing up because I wanted to ask you about, we have two other things with Trump that you've got to comment on. Number one is, of course, the health care thing, which, you know, that old saying about, you know, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and getting <laughs> the same result. So they get a deadline. They get a hard deadline. Yeah, because if they don't right do it now, they're juggling Jello. They're doing yeah. whatever they can. They're asking Murkowski what she wants. They're asking Susan Collins what she wants. They need those votes. But they lost McCain, and they might lose Cruz. I don't. I, well, I don't no, no. But here, they, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, they, with with the health care bill by, and people have to know this. I think by Saturday or something. If they don't, by the end of this session, which is Friday, I think, if they don't come up with a bill, the, the ability to pass the bill goes back up to, what, 60 people? Yes, they, they need 60 they votes. They need 60. To break closure. It has to go through closure. Yeah. So, so that's why they have it until September 30th to get, get it done with 50 votes. Yeah. And they thought they had this made. They would get rid of Obamacare and whatever, but it... Really, they didn't. It, 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 McCain suddenly became a hero again. They had seven years to work on this. Seven years. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't do their homework. Is what happened. They. They didn't even bother putting together an outline. And then finally, when they have the House and they have the Senate, and now they have the White House, they folded like a lawn chair in Hurricane <laughs> Irma. They choked like a long neck goose being force-fed yeah. gravel. And the other one. The story I wanted to mention to you was North Korea. Uh, you know, when Kim Jong-un says you're crazy, <laughs> you can take that to the bank. You know. Yeah, this is uh, this is still scary. I mean, you think of all the disasters that have hit us in the last month or so. I mean, we've had... Uh, flash floods, wildfires, multiple earthquakes, multiple uh, post-7-1 earthquakes, uh, multiple Category 5 hurricane stream in the Caribbean, and Donald Trump addressing the General Assembly at the United Nations. So right. it's been a bad, bad, bad month for the... Uh, for the Western Hemisphere. We didn't have a Hurricane Donald this year. We should have had a Hurricane Donald. 
Yeah, yeah Typhoon Donald. Or Typhoon Donald or something yeah. like that. Yeah. It, it's just it's just amazing. I just, uh, you know. But it, it, again, once again, for a guy like uh, uh, Will Durst, uh, this is a mana from heaven. <laughs> Man, the hard part is keeping it all together. It's uh, it's not it's not writing the new stuff. It's it's figuring out where it goes in the act. Yeah, but the hardest part for you must be, uh, what what material do I throw out so I only have forty five minutes? Yeah, I used to have an eighty five minute show. Now the show's ninety five minutes. I yeah. swear to God. Yeah. It's ninety, which is too long. I gotta, I gotta cut ten minutes up. Yeah. Now, where are you right now? Where are we talking to you from? Because you're obviously in a hotel room with an unmade bed. Uh, yeah. you, oh, a dose of Will Durst. Your key to the door. What to the what? What's the name of that magazine? A door Weekly. Uh, I'm in Door County, Wisconsin. It, it, yeah, and I made the cover of their little. Uh, Wait a minute! Paper. You're finding comedy outposts no one else has found. You're kind no, of this, the Lewis and Clark kind of, of comedy. This, this is no Door County. This is uh, kind of like the the Catskills for New York, oh, uh, for oh, the oh, upper Midwest. Oh, really? Door County is like uh, the vacation destination, and uh, they have three professional equity theaters up here. Wow! It's, I know it's it's incredible. Yeah. Well, anyway, Will Durst, great talking hey, to you. Hey, Alex Bennett, thanks for having me. Yeah. Have a great FaceTime. Y y yeah, we always have a great FaceTime. And uh, have a good time in Wisconsin. And next time we talk to you, I guess you'll be back in San Francisco. Yeah, let's do this again in San Francisco. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Will Durst, look at that face. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And uh, that's our old friend Will Durst. My voice was a little low on that because I I was using a different uh, different computer because I uh, you know I've been having that problem with uh, people people and their their lips not syncing. Well, I found that if I use the other machine, the the Mac, it they they do sync a lot better on Skype. So uh, that was what I did. And the only thing was I didn't I didn't his mic was very loud and mine was very low. And I forgot to, like, bring my mic up a lot so that you could hear me. But uh, you know, I, I, I always enjoy talking with him. And by the way, he is not only our only video guest this week on uh, Thursday, and I, I hate promoting things until I got him in the, in the can, uh, but I, 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 don't have him in, I don't have it in the can, but I have it in the bag in the, as much as I've been told that uh, he will be appearing here on this program uh, on uh, f uh, Thursday, uh, we'll be talking with our old friend Rob Schneider. So that, that'll be a lot of fun, too. Anyway, how are you, folks? Uh, it's just another Pleasant Valley Sunday right here in uh, status symbol land. Oh, uh, the fo oh, oh, it's Charlene is calling. Charlene is the first one calling. My, my, Charlene, why, do you, why did you want to call all of a sudden, huh? Oh, because um, Rob is going to do that tour tonight, so I got excited. I want to see. <laughs> He's going to do the tour. Look at him. That's your studio, isn't it? No, well, that's part of it. it. It's part of it, but you're kind of like getting it together. You've got the microphone and the whole thing. I am buried in a sea of cables, and you know, look behind me here. This, I don't know if you can see yeah, all the yeah. stuff. Well, see that big black thing on the table there? Yeah. That's the uh, PC that I use to do all the studio work, and I can't set it up right now because yeah. I'm missing the, the dual monitor stand that goes, see, here's... Oh, I see. One of the monitors. Oh, I see. Okay. I don't have... I, 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 you know, you have a dual you, monitor I, where it like it like you have it here, and then you have another one right above it, right? Well, side to side. Oh, side right? to side. I see. And I this thing I have what I what I'm missing is the monitor stand itself clamps to the desk, right? Yeah. And you turn the thing on the bottom, and it tightens. Yeah. I'm missing the stupid piece of metal. Oh wow! I, I can't <laughs> find it anywhere. Wow. I hate when something like that happens. Yeah. So I call the company, and they're gonna. 
they must have thought, what a jerk. And they're going to ship me one. Oh. So I'm waiting on that. So I and can't then after, fire. after you do that, Rob, then it'll turn up wherever you had it, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I can't uh, I can't fire up um, the, uh, the the machine that I do all the editing with. This is I'm using the Mac. I've got the USB connected to the Mac to be able to do this tonight. Yeah. So and I have no speakers set up, and it's just uh, makeshift. Well, I mean, it's the beginning. Come on, the you, just, you just moved yeah. in. Phil, what? Phil has to send you egg crates. To set, put Phil, on I can't wall. remember how I set <laughs> this thing up. Oh, um, uh, I don't I, remember. I, I don't remember if I plugged in XLR cables or I uh, can't find the cables. And uh, you plugged <sighs> in, um, I think XLRs to that and uh, phonos to the uh, to the speakers to the speakers. Yeah. 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 So, and then I went to plug in a cable the other day. I'm hooking up all of this stuff. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm hooking up all this stuff. And I, and I went and I uh, plugged in uh, cables, and I broke one of the cables. I had to go out and buy a cable this afternoon. Let, let me look at the back of mine. Right. You don't have to go crazy. It's no big deal. It's just, uh, it's going to take me a little while to get the, I, you know, I didn't document how I put it together. Well, you know, the wonderful thing wow. is, though, is that you're going to put everything together, and all of a sudden that mass of uh, jumble of wires uh, will be a new jumble of wires, <laughs> you know, because that's always what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, they, it, I, I've often thought about, like, maybe I'll, I'll take a week off the air here, and I'll just rewire this entire studio, because I don't know where anything goes anymore. I just know it's there, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, but I, I I think these are my send and returns to the audio processor. And I think it's the problem <laughs> is I didn't label anything. <laughs> so I have to remember. I, what, what well, this mine, thing, mine this all this went into is, this box, this and then you mutes, brought it. This thing mutes the speakers, right? So when you know when I want to open the mic and I've got the speakers hot, I press the button here, like if you had a button on your console that muted your studio speakers, and. Two it has, it, well, it has, I can't find the cables that I plug in back here, and I'm like... Well, for XLRs, uh, the two on the left, and then there's two phonos on the right in the back of that piece. Oh, boy, this is exciting. Hey, anyway. My microphone at the right level... Uh, so I'm like, just excited that he's got his big microphone oh, going. You know. I'm, now, I'm not modulating it. Yeah, and he's not in bed or something tonight. Yeah, <laughs> he's sitting upright. Yeah, this is terrific. This is uh, you know. Uh, Any cats? It, Any cats in the studio? No, not yet. Yeah, yeah. The little guy in the corner. The, the 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 old lady in the corner there. Oh, there we go. Oh, there she is, licking her tail, or or maybe even her pussy. She's she. I think in another life was a radio. DJ or something because she's always in this room. She was always in my other studio. She just or she might have been a radio here. DJ groupie because she's always under the desk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there were those, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I actually have a funny story. I, I was dating this girl when I was working at this radio station yeah. and I used to have when if, if something good was going to happen I would put on a tape. Yeah. I had actually made a 30 minute tape that I could run yeah. and go. Yeah. So we were in the general manager's office on the couch. Right. And right in the middle of it, I looked at her and I said, you know, I'm doing to you what my boss does to all of us the rest of the <laughs> 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 She didn't like that too much. I'll tell you what, uh, uh, there's a story I heard, and I, I don't, it, it's, uh, you probably heard this story too, about an announcer who, who decided that he would put on you know, in those days, if you wanted 25 minutes, you put on Alice's Restaurant. Mm. Yeah. Right by Arlo Guthrie. He was in Agata de Vida. Huh? Or Sad in Agata de Vida was another one. There, there were, yeah. So he decided he wanted to, um, he, he, had, he had to go <laughs> next door to the radio station to fuck this woman. And he went next door, and when he came back, the record had stuck. <laughs> 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 I always had the radio on low in the general manager's office just in case. Here's something that people don't know. 
Uh, and maybe people in every profession have their own form of nightmare, but did you ever have a DJ nightmare? Oh, all the and, time. And, and tell me what was in the what the DJ nightmare was. Get locked out of the studio. That's it. That's it. You have this dream every now and then where you get locked out of the studio and there's no Dead way air. to get back in. Either that or... Or you leave the studio and somehow things are preventing you from getting back yes, to the studio. And you're tr- I had I, he used to work in television as a master control operator for Bravo American Movie Classics, which is AMC now, and the Playboy Channel. Yeah. And we used to have the studio uh, control room, I should say, with a big switcher on it. And then there were sliding glass doors out to the machine room. Yeah. And out there you had like six one-inch VTRs, and then we used to use, in case something would happen with one-inch, we had everything synced with three-quarter-inch. So yeah. you would start the movies at the same time, so if something happened to the one-inch, you got a backup copy. So it was a one-man operation, so you'd run outside on like a five-second switch, and yeah. you'd count five, and then you'd walk in, and you'd switch the, the input, to you know, whether it be an interstitial, interstitial or whatever. And I had a dream the same thing one night. I had to make a movie switch because the movies came in two parts. The movies were too long to be on one reel. So you'd have to watch for where the movie switch was so you can, on a shot change, you can switch to the other reel of the movie. And I had to do a movie switch, and I ran outside. I hit the pre-roll, and there was like a party going on in front of the doorway to get back into the control room. And I'm fighting. I got to get in. I got to press the button. (laughs) I had that in radio. I had that in TV. Really? Really? Uh, I, Jack, Jack Bishop has called us. Anytime you're telling radio stories, he has to join in. <laughs> that's not, yeah, I do, but uh, that's not the reason. But I'm so glad to find out that somebody else has had versions of that dream. It's called, I call it the DJ nightmare, and I've never met a yeah. radio guy in my life who didn't have that recurring nightmare. There's a cop dream that I, I used to have as a recurring nightmare. And that was that I was in a gunfight, and my, and I'm pulling the trigger as hard as I could, and the gun wouldn't fire, and uh, I was just standing there as if I was uh, naked, and and uh, and oh, vulnerable. Uh, because I thought the cop nightmare was that the black guy was innocent. Innocent. Uh, <laughs> 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 Take a knee. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> I think I just beat myself. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, every every profession, I think that there's some sort of uh, reoccurring dream. Oh, I imagine uh, I imagine butchers have butcher nightmares. You know, the chicken's not fresh. Either that, or their finger gets cut off, or something. You know. Yeah, that's true. I actually called for trying to get some information. How come this thing is sounding so funny to me tonight? No. Um, um, Rob was talking about having a relay that mutes his speakers. I've been trying to find one of those. Oh, yeah, I've got one. I got the same called one. Called Nanopatch. Nanopatch. Yeah. Right. Now, it doesn't automatically mute the speakers. You have to right. push that little button, that little silver. Yeah. yeah. You just uh, press this little button right here, and yeah. it mutes the speakers so and that it, when you the volume. It doesn't, and it, it, it doesn't kill your mic, though. It doesn't um, kill the mic. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome. No patch. Well, pardon me while I go to the internet. I have something to order. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't remember where I got mine. I think I got it from uh, ZZ Music or or Sweetwater. Might have been Sweetwater. But thought, do a for, search. I thought you were going to say ZZ. I really Trump. don't care. I just reach over and turn down the speakers and put the earphones on. I yeah. don't. I don't. Because so, you, were, huh? you, you you've been in this stuff since Marconi. There are those of us that came along a little later. Yeah, yeah. I used to. You know. You know. One of those Morse code wireless. One of those Morse code things. I was the first one to try and talk into it. <laughs> See, my so. if I turn down the speakers, it brings down my headphones too on my mixer. Uh, uh, I, I no, see. Well, that's shouldn't. because you've got a well. You got a Behringer, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's no, the problem with no. the Behringer. Oh, because you're not using the nano patch. If you were using the nano patch, it would be separate from that. No, field. no, no. When, when the nano patch isn't oh, connected, God. if yeah. I turn down the speakers we're, we're down right, in the studio, studio it watching. turns off my that, speakers that, and my headphones. Yeah. That's right, because uh, they're not separate at the moment. Right. 
Right. So anyway, I took a big hit, a big loss in uh, in uh, uh, Facebook friends. You know, this term friend, I think if, if uh, what's his name, uh, the head of uh, Facebook, uh, Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg, should be a, a, a just executed for anything is for cheapening the word friend okay um but uh i have a, a the you know i have the five thousand friends that you're allowed to have as your top amount and i pretty well kept them for all, all uh, for a long time and i didn't buy any of them we were talking about buying people on facebook and you know twitter and so on uh but uh the thing that got to me was that uh, I, I th yesterday I decided I was just I, w I was mad, okay? I was mad because I think that what Donald Trump did vis-a-vis -vis the, the, the the football people was unconscionable. Listen, you know, and um, and it was completely unconscionable. And, and, and so basically I said something that I've been saying privately for years. Uh, fuck the American flag and fuck the national anthem. Fuck. And uh, then I said it takes a lot. Anybody can stand for those things. It takes a lot, it takes a lot of guts to kneel in protest. You know, and I lost about 15 friends immediately like that. And I lost about 20 followers. I think the country uh, disagrees with you at the moment that uh, that they're feeling more towards what Donald Trump has said and that Donald Trump is saying what a lot of people wanted nah, to say. Nah. And no, no one. Would, how, um, how come the amount of people that were booing at these football games were very minor and the people who were cheering were quite verbose? Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, I, I think that's well, a, that's you know, a, that's a talking point. That's nothing more. Yes, uh, I think uh, most of the protesting this weekend is more due to Donald Trump saying what he said on Friday than anything else. Yeah, the problem yeah. is, and I'll get to Jack next. Uh, the, the the problem is is that the original protest was over Black Lives Matter. That's why Kaepernick took the knee. Right, uh, anti police. Huh? Anti police. Well, no, he was. It wasn't anti police. It was against. It was anti police brutality. Isn't he wearing pig socks? Yeah, he did. Yeah, but it was, uh, was it was anti police brutality. In any event, that's not why they were taking the knee this weekend. This weekend, they were holding arms and they were taking the knee as a protest against Trump right. uh, because of what Trump had said. You know, yep. and uh, the best line of all that I heard, uh, and I'm going to have to paraphrase it. Kaepernick, he called uh, Kaepernick a son of a bitch, an sob, right? And no, he called he called them all sons of bitches. Sons of Fire bitches, of yeah. but basically he was also implicating by association yeah. Kaepernick, and Kaepernick's mother put out a tweet that said, "Well, this bitch is proud of her son." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and did you also hear that Tillman uh, Tillman's mother sent out a uh, a tweet or whatever to uh, Trump? And told him not to use his son as, you know, Tillman, if you don't know, was the guy yeah. who uh, quit the NFL and went and got killed in the in war. Yeah. <clears throat> Friendly fire, actually. But um, his wife or his mom told him not to use his kid's name in a way that would divide, you know, the country as yeah. well as the other vets. Good for her. Did, did he invoke Tillman's name? Yes. Yes. Oh. Yes, it did. Mm -hmm. You had your hand up, uh, Jack, and I forgot yeah, to... I sure did. Uh, uh, look, Kaepernick began his protest in the Obama era, which everybody should remember, but most right. of us have forgotten. I was there. Uh, another thing, for Phil, there was a poll out today, uh, and I don't have it here in front of me, uh, as to who issued the poll, but 57% of the Americans who were polled said, we we disagree with the president on this issue. Geez, I heard one that it said 64% agree. Well, that's He's, over at Fox. Well, no. <laughs> uh, I think so. 
No, you may have seen the one, seen uh, another one that did say that, but that was 64% of Anglos who were polled. Another poll, polling folks, uh, polling folks like me, 76% backed the players. Well, I, I believe the players have a right to free speech. I just don't believe that their right extends to when they're being paid as professionals to well, wait a minute. Do, do we do we do we worry about what rock and rollers no, say do? You go to a rock and roll show and expect the anthem to be played but well, the other hand, well, well my question I have, a, I have a good question for you phil why mm -hmm. is the fucking national anthem played at a football game now that that's an interesting thing uh you know, there's a lot of sporting events, especially ones that are worldwide or have country representation, that that is done. Well, it's done, uh, no, it's done representing the countries, and in the case if it's right. like Spain versus Portugal, they'll play both right. national anthems, uh, 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 you know, but because those now, are the... I, but, but what I'm saying is, why? And, and secondly, i got to tell you something. When I was a kid, uh, this, I'm going to have to go a little far afield here. When I was a kid, I, I was the only Jew in a Catholic neighborhood. And when we went to school, uh, they would always have a priest come by because the church, big church, St. Peter's and St. Paul's was down the street. And he would come by and he would lead us in prayer. And I, as the Jew, I, I always you know, went, okay, well, I guess it's okay if I pray, you know. And the then he would thing. go, you know, please, uh, dear God, make it so that blah, 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 and blah, 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 and make it so our lives have purpose and meaning. And I'm going, this is okay so far. You know, I believe in God, and that's okay. And then he all of a sudden just throws that thing in, and in God's name we pray, amen, and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. And I'm going, uh-oh, I just had my head bowed to praying to Jesus, and I'm Jewish, <laughs> and I don't believe in Jesus. So the same thing holds true with the national anthem at a game. Suppose I don't want to put my hand over my heart. Suppose I want to keep sitting. There's peer pressure for me to stand up and put my hand on my heart. Nobody's standing up and putting their hand on their heart because they're patriots and they love America. On the other hand, there's just as much peer pressure not to come out of the tunnel uh, during the anthem uh, by the other players and, and and so forth. So there's peer pressure on both sides. Well, well, no, but no, no, the, the, that's a newer peer pressure. What I'm saying is whenever the national anthem is played, what do we all do? We stand, we put our hands over our heart, right? right. Uh, mm -hmm. or, or, or we pledge or, allegiance to the flag. I don't believe in the Pledge of Allegiance, by the way. Uh, I think that's horrible. How dare you, you even say that I have to pledge allegiance uh, and that it was, says, I pledge you, allegiance, wait a minute, listen to it. I pledge allegiance to the flag, not to the country, not to the people, not to, the, you know, whatever, to the flag. This is iconic worship, okay, of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation. And then they added this one under during God. the 50s, under God. It wasn't, mm -hmm. they didn't say under God. Uh, until the mid 50s when there was a big communist scare and they threw that in you know that was my first radio gig uh sixth grade pa system doing the pledge in the morning yeah but what i'm saying is <laughs> I, I i think the pledge of allegiance is a terrible thing i think it's horrible i don't think i should have to pledge my allegiance to this country it should be assumed you know yes well, jack speaking of the things that most people don't know about the pledge it was originally written not as a pledge of allegiance to the United States. It was written as a pledge of allegiance to world peace following World War I. Uh, oh, really? I didn't know that. I did know something else about that silly little song called the National Anthem, uh, that it wasn't the National Anthem till 1932. It was a beer drinking song. Was it, well, no, British no, 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 it... it it's not completely a beer drinking song. Half of it was a poem by Francis Scott Key, right? Mm -hmm. Didn't write it as a song. Later on, they took that the melody, poem right? and they added it to Anacreon in Heaven, which is actually a famous beer drinking song from the 1700s. Well, what party years they were. Yeah. 
So really what we're doing is we're standing up and putting our hands over our hearts for a beer drinking song. <laughs> That yeah, is all, that. What, wait a minute. Is all about war and bombs bursting in air and uh, whatever. Where we could I have just, gone, we could have gone with something like "America the Beautiful," and that would have been fine. All beautiful, right, spacious guys like for amber better. waves of grain. Saw, you know. I saw some uh, film on uh, Facebook the other night. I think I might have sent it to you, where uh, it had. Uh, who, whoever uh, came up with this, it was a Francis Scott Key uh, doing some negotiation to have a prisoner exchange with the with the British, and the British were going to uh, uh, bomb Fort McHenry. The War uh, of 1812 or something, no, isn't no, it? Uh, I think it was before that. But that's were, why the flag was still there and all that stuff. And that's and that's where they got the thing because he was communicating. He was still on the ship. Uh, where they're keeping all of these prisoners, and he was communicating with those prisoners and letting them know what was going on as the British were bombing with tons of ships. They had their whole uh, armada out there, and uh, the flag uh, continued to fly. No, and- I thought it was because they had a big battle, and he wrote the song. Because I have a little children's well, book or something about it. That uh, it's because the flag was still there after like a battle at the War, War of eighteen twelve. Well, supposedly like. he was on the boat on the ship yeah. while this bombing. And he saw the yeah. flag right. was still there, even though it was like all and, and, right. ripped and, up and shredded. And, and he like, probably didn't even write it at that point. He probably went home and said, "Ah, oh, here I've got a good idea for a poem." Blah 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 blah. <laughs> Maybe. And yeah. then they said, well, you know, that sounds, that would go good with this beer drinking song. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. So, which, uh, by the way, if I want to find it, you can find it on the internet. The actual original song is available. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, a lot of things go good with beer. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so first of all, the, 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 the national anthem is a sucky, horrible song. Most people can't even sing it. Okay. Except Whitney Houston. It, it's got somebody. yeah, it's got a really high <laughs> note in it that they used to test. They used to audition singers for the New York City Metropolitan Opera by asking them to sing the national anthem, and if they could get through it without going off key or off pitch or whatever, they got the job. That's how what a difficult song it is. Secondly, um, it it is just it's it's inappropriate it it doesn't be speak of our nation and how beautiful it is if you if you listen to a lot of other national anthems they're about how beautiful their country is you know it's like a commercial with, yeah what mike same with god bless america it actually tells about how the country is the united states is how beautiful well god it is. bless america is written by irving berlin and is really a contemporary pop song do uh, you know what Kim Jong Un's uh, national anthem is? Uh, uh, hey, everybody, look at me. I don't know. <laughs> Alex. Yeah. Alex. You know this whole thing with these athletes. It reminds me of the Olympics when, you know, those black athletes came out and put their yeah. fists up like Black Power. Yeah. It reminds me of that. That's what it reminds me of. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, this wasn't quite that. Uh, quite that. Uh, what can I call it? Uh, like that was uh, the worst type wasn't of wasn't quite was. as aggressive as that was. You know, this was just... Uh, here's a part I didn't get, and I, I mentioned this to... Um, I was talking to Bubbles today, and, and we were doing an interview, and I've taught, you'll hear it later uh, tomorrow night, as a matter of fact. And we talked about the kneeling. That's what I don't get. Uh, why are they kneeling? That's a sign of obedience, uh, yep. if, if you, for instance, uh, I've, I've seen a lot of things about England and about queens who want somebody to have her lo- the, his, somebody's loyalty, and in order to get their loyalty, they have to give her the knee. They have to literally get on their knee, and you know, uh, honor them. Uh, so I don't understand why the knee that that bothers me. Uh, with your hand up in the air with a fist, that says something, you know. Uh, hey, a finger, that might be nice too, you know. <laughs> well, the other yeah. thing that has me thinking is, you know, I've always wondered, you know, if you're supposed to stop what you're doing and put your hand on your heart and stand at attention and look at the flag. Take your hat yet off. You constantly, your hat yeah, your hat off. And you look around and you see these photographers pointing cameras up their noses and running around taking pictures and, 
guys on the sidelines and totally ignoring it, but nobody says shit about that. No, uh, I but I mean, the fact that you have to do it is kind of a peer pressure. And yeah, I yeah. understand why a black person in America wouldn't want to stand for the national anthem. Because well, in many like ways, he's grown people. up to realize it doesn't represent him. You know, and I got things, I got certain items in this, in this, in this tirade from people about various things going, well, that flag represents every man who ever died in every war, blah, 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 blah. And I went, bullshit. That flag killed every man in every war. Okay? You know, it was the rep. Uh, uh, oh, we're going to go fight for God and country and flag, you know? Uh, and uh, uh, flags are the things that separate us. Flags are the things that are at the head of a, a, an army marching into another country. Um, pisses me off the Israelis have a flag on the back of every tank. You know, that they, happens to be my, my the, the, the symbol of my religion. How dare they put that on a, on a method of destruction? You know, so... I got a question for you, Alex. Yeah. So you lost, what, 15 followers? How many hookers did you get? <laughs> <laughs> well, I had a whole bunch of people Thank waiting you, waiting to be friends, so I simply let them know it was available. Uh, and we're all filled up again, you know. Okay. But get so the guy sure. Todd from uh, they called on the phone the other night I, that uh, mentioned that he'd been waiting to become a friend. Mm-hmm. Good. I, I think I got him the other day. Yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, luckily, I the you know I get but I get the hookers, you know. Oh, and also some <laughs> uh, and also uh, some uh, rent boys, as they are called in England. Oh. Uh, huh. A little mix, huh? Yeah, so I get a little mix. I guess they figure, hey, well, let's give it a try. He might be gay. Hey, I'll pass that on to Brian in the next hour. Well, I mean, my, <laughs> my attitude is, uh, you know, a blowjob is a blowjob. Uh, you know, so, but, uh, but anyway, so I and, I, and once again, I have decided now that I'm going into radio silence on my Facebook page. I'm not going to say or do anything. The only thing I'm going to do are these four hours, of eight hours a week that we do I, Facebook Live, and that's it. That's all I'm going to do. I, you don't go to your security uh, and uh, make it so that people can't post, but you can post whatever you damn well please. Nobody posts to my Facebook page. Uh, my mother kept posting, and I, you know, I finally had to unfriend her. But uh, you know, as far as uh, you know, as far as that's, if I want to, that's our pink, Phil unfriending his mother. Damn, damn, Phil. The only person that gives me any recommendations at the carpet store. <laughs> she yeah. said, "Do it anymore." How many charges at the carpet store? <laughs> so, uh, hey, that's it, nothing. I knew a guy who sued his mother. Yeah. Took her to court over money. No, I thought he was. Oh. I thought he was going to sue her over giving birth to him. You know. Oh. How dare you bring me into this world? Hey, has ever, anybody seen the uh, the, the latest uh, uh, sexism or a Republican putting his foot in his mouth over some sexist comment? Hello, hello John Rockwell, by the way. Hello, hello. Yeah. Anyway, what? Oh, yeah. So uh, Republican uh, Mark Warner, Walker, I'm sorry. He's the chairman of the Conservative Republican uh, Study Committee, yeah. the RSC. He said in a, in a statement today, and this is a quote, the accomplished men and women of the RSC and women, if, if it wasn't sexist, I would say the RSC eye candy, but we'll leave that out of the record. Oh, boy. <laughs> Call them eye candy. And he does that on a day when Saudi Arabia says women can now drive in the country. Yeah, yeah you know, do you hear that about Saudi Arabia? Soon. They're allowing ladies soon, but it's coming up soon. But yeah, they're going to allow they're, kind of they're, they're going to allow them to drive, but it looks like uh, it's going to create a whole new set of problems for them over there because when if women can drive, they can then go take jobs that they never took before because they didn't have the, the travel ability. So it's going to tra change a lot in the social structure over there. They uh, work. They're all the, you yeah. know, that they get beheaded for. Driving, 
Yeah. But they'll get beheaded soon enough. By, by the way, oh, Renee, yeah. Renee Collins <laughs> makes it a full house now. Thank you, Renee. Hey, Charlene. Like in the new hair. Oh, thank you. You know, it, if anything should happen, my husband came home, but I think I might be all right. I'm not sure. If I drop off, it's like, you know, but I yeah. hope he doesn't, you know. Make Are you it taking some away. kind of medicine? Because you don't fall asleep anymore. <laughs> oh, okay. no. You know, you know, Scott Boddicker always says when you ask him what's he was, I was sleeping. Because <laughs> that's what I've been doing. I've been sleeping. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm really tired because I had to get up really early today to do uh, to do Will Durst. He was out in the Midwest. He gets up early. I for I don't know how a comedian gets up early. It just doesn't well, make sense to me. They they have to to get on the radio shows. But yeah, uh, 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 yeah you're right. You're right. Yeah. Morning ones. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's so why. That, well, that's why I was talking. When I was talking to Penn. That's the reason. One of the reasons why Teller's silent is he knows he does, can't do morning radio shows. <laughs> so, it, so Penn has to be the guy to get up early every morning and go plug the shows. You know. Martin. That was a good. Uh, that was a good interview with him, Alex. I, yeah. I heard that it was yeah. good. But you know, now, have you seen the show uh, uh, Dice Clay with Teller? You know. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say something about that. I, I think of you now, Phil, because I've been watching that show Dice. Oh, yeah. And, uh, oh. You know, it would be, but I didn't see that one, though, but I have to look out for it. And now, uh, Alex, that stuff about Jerry Lewis that you said, you know, Friday. Yeah. That was incredible. I never heard that anywhere. That's why I like you. Yeah. That he had like the six kids that he cut out of the will and all that. that well, I, I just I just read that in the news. It was just an item the other day. Uh, I didn't hear it but anywhere, uh, yeah, yeah. Teller was on uh, Dice, and he actually talked. Yeah, and it's not like he's never talked. They did a movie called Penn and Teller Get Killed, and he talks in that picture mm -hmm. at the end, towards the end of it. And um, uh, I've seen him interviewed and so on. He has a very fine voice, he, and he, but he comes off entirely in a different comedic fashion on Dice than he does. When he's with Penn and Teller, because when you add the voice, he then has to add the timing and the inflection and so on. And he did a great job, but sure, it's an turn, but it's an entirely different person. You know? the, the turnabout was so good on that show. Uh, you know, when uh, uh, Dice walks into the room, I don't want to spoil it. Yeah, but uh, you know, he, he meets the gang of twelve. <laughs> but yeah. you just spoiled it now, Phil. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But, uh, I got to see that one. I've been watching some of them. What happened to Dice, though? Because he looks kind of weird. What happened to him? He got older. He got old. Yeah. Yeah. He and heavy. And look at yeah. yourself. Look at me. Look at now. Phil. Look at you know. Look at all of us. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you guys. I mean, he. I don't know. There's something weird about him. I don't know. I liked him better before. There's always something weird about him. <laughs> you liked him better before. Well, he, I don't. Here, I don't here know. was the thing about Dice Clay that always bothered me is that he came up with this dumb, stupid act with this horrible character he created. Yeah, and and, and like yet, I knew him used. prior to that as a very good actor. He, he was yeah. a very good actor. And, and he's doing the job. Yeah, he's, a, he's an excellent actor. In fact, he was in the Woody Allen film that, uh, uh, what's her name, won the Academy Award for. Uh, and he was terrific. He was just terrific. So that's what he should have been doing all along, rather than that stupid shit smoking the cigarette like this and all that <laughs> bullshit, you know. Yeah, but, you know, I knew guys like that, and that's what I thought was so hysterical about it. That's you know, like... Jersey. Well, yeah, because the guys were like that in Jer Jersey, you know. Like the like Joe Piscopo was Jersey, too, right? You know, like... Another, I, I another like great so talent. A great comedic oh, talent. Oh, God, isn't he mad and he thinks they're going to take the... Uh, the Statue of Columbus at a Columbus Circle or something. He had nothing to do with the Civil War. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. That, that's another like, reason to take it out. Uh, yeah, there's another fault. Well, to begin with, he never discovered America. Yeah, he how do you how do you discover a place where people already are? And but yeah, he discovered the Dominican <laughs> Republic. He never even got into the continental United States on the first trip. If he did. It was really oh. yeah, on the first trip. He might have the second trip. I over to one of those. Yeah, places. but but uh, Leif Erikson beat him to it as the first non-indigenous person to 
to well, land those here. Who believe the Chinese beat Leif Erikson. Oh, yeah. That I'm could not. be because some of the Chinese may be what right. became American Indians. Mm -hmm. I had a buddy who I worked with at a, at a radio station eons ago who was a Cherokee Indian. And I, you know, once asked him, uh, we were coming up to uh, Columbus Day, and I said, hey, you do anything for Columbus Day? He said, yeah, trying to get people like you deported, anybody that's not an Indian. <laughs> an indigenous American, please, Jack. Well, he used the term Indian, so I figured it was okay. But he told me. Because when you story. say Indian, I ask, dot head or woo-woo? Woo-woo. <laughs> Well, he, he told me a story. Uh, he, he, this guy, like so many of the guys that were in our business in the 50s and early 60s, could drink like nobody's business. Yeah. So he's getting drunk at a bar in New Orleans. He was working at WNOE down there. Mm -hmm. And uh, he gets in the conversation with another guy at the uh, sitting on a stool, and the conversation goes along, and the the guy says, hey, by the way, what are you? And Charlie said, uh, I'm a disc jockey. And he said, no, I mean, you know, what race are you? He said, oh, I'm an American Indian. And he said, and he sw told me this was true. He said, the guy turned to him and said, I didn't think you were any kind of regular American. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, by the way, by the way, a royal flush. We have a royal flush here. Uh, hey, hey repeat, repeat for Brian what you said earlier since he just joined us. A blowjob is a blowjob? <laughs> no, about the rent boards that we're trying to get. Oh. It's a royal flush, yeah. Uh, Would well, you have to fair? go to another room to actually flush the toilet? <laughs> is that what you did? He brought a microphone with him. <laughs> It in there and, he brought the wireless <laughs> mic with him. Sounded better than the last time he did a flight. Yeah. Yeah. At least tonight, Bill has... What about rent boys? Well, hey, no, no. I use the term rent boys. You know the term rent boys, right? I know an English girl that uses that term, right? For a, a male... A male prostitute, prostitute right? is a rent yeah. boy. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. yeah. So. At least tonight, Phil Meyer has on pants. The other night, wearing the same gotkas that I had on the other night. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, the other night you were wearing blue jockey shorts, and that <laughs> shocked us all, right, Jack? Well, I'm, I'm wearing black yeah. gotkas. I've got, I've got Johns, you know. <laughs> well, if Kim Kardashian uh, broke the internet, Phil here blinded it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't. You know, I'm so wide. I don't. You know, my camera can't get the whole thing in one angle. There you go. Really? Anyway, right. so yeah, I, I have the same problem with the me. Hubble telescope. Couldn't get it in any angle. <laughs> <laughs> that's deep space, though. You need the International Space Station. Hey, uh, oh, it's deep, all right. Too deep. Yep, too deep. Yep. <laughs> anyway, let's get on to another topic here. Of, uh, yes, please. Of, 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 can, can I ask a tech question of Rob or you? Oh, or, God. Here we uh, go. Okay, let, here, we're going to lose audience. Go ahead. Uh, on Next Saturday, uh, I, I'm going down, and this guy's going to set up my Drobo, but he told me I also needed what to have What is a Drobo? A, He's going to set up my Drobo. He just says, what the hell is that? Is that a gay term? It sounds, it sounds like some hand? kind of filthy term or something. Hey, you want right. to yeah. blow my Drobo? It's a, a backup oh. thing. Now he's uh, going to show it to us. Oh, no. Oh, oh Drobo. I was worried when he said a guy's going to go down on. <laughs> so he's, he's going to set it up. Oh, uh, wait, wait a minute. Hold, hold on. Everybody, calm down. Calm down. What's a, what's a Drobo? What's a Drobo? Don't leave holds uh, a bunch of drives so it's oh. got uh, five eight terabyte drives in it for oh, mass wow. well maybe the name of the product is a drobo but most people just call it a uh, what do they call it a, yes. an array it's, an array it's not a, this is this is all storage i know so it, i know it's any, an array uh yeah so anyway to or raid up, raid is another term right. yeah 
He's also dealing with uh, the way I store stuff. So not only is it this, but he wants me to have a four terabyte uh, external drive. Uh, uh, also to back up back- the Drobo. <laughs> right. Yeah. So anyway, I'm looking and this I'm trying like to figure buying, out. This is like buying a cat had. to take care of the rats and buying a dog to take care of the cats. and to, you know. Right. Well, th- this is very redundant the stuff. House Jack built. Uh, so I need a four terabyte portable drive, and I'm looking, and uh, there's a Seagate, an ex- Seagate extension. I have one right here. I have a, I have a four four terabyte right here sitting on my. Which would you recommend? I don't know any yeah, one of them. It doesn't like matter. Doesn't they're all go- they're, they're It doesn't matter. They're all going to go bad eventually. All right, but there's a Western Digital My Passport. I'm looking at the at the uh, star ratings and all of that stuff. I have stuff. a Seagate here, and I have a Western Digital. Uh, uh-huh. uh, the and they're both uh, they're both four. Here's a My Passport, and it's uh, it's uh, uh, four t- it's oh, four I have terabytes. One of those, my Passport. I know what they're. Right. External uh, hard drive. An external hard drive. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Add to cart. See, we just Stop. lost Brian. He's so <laughs> bored. <laughs> Yeah, that, I might go too. It's boring. Talking yeah. about Drobos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, look it up. I have a Drobo 5TD. Still sounds uh, like a gay sex term. Right. See, you, could buy, right. you might do just as well buying a Western Digital box or a Seagate box, you know. Lacey. Lacey. Lacey, yeah. Is it, good? Uh, Is it a network drive? No. Oh, well, then that's bullshit then. No, it's. Uh, uh, I, I would buy a network. It's a RAID six. Uh, I have it set up as a RAID six. But I would buy. Uh, you know, if I were, if I had the money right now, I would get rid of. I have like about four different, uh, four or five different network drives. I would get rid of all of them, get an array, and uh, that I that that can be networked and use that and put everything I have on that and just you know have it in one little place. This thing specifically not a NAS. It's, you know, you guys. This is as uh, interesting as the one this, night, I don't know what night it was, you were saying CQ and talking about cards and all yeah. this. Yeah, Except yeah. this is really exciting. It, uh, let me get on to something. My let father me, was a CB radio guy, and I think he used to say CQ, CQ. Let me, let me, let me get, get, up, uh, get, get around to something a little more uh, juicy. And that's the fact that after seven years of trying over and over and oh, yeah. over and <laughs> over and over and over, stop me when I've gone too far, and over and we over the again, yeah, 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 the, the Republicans uh, finally, finally have decided Morning. to give up the ghost. I, I don't think they're finally oh. done. I think they're going to come back and try again. Yes, but yeah. you know, they can't try again. After this weekend, after Saturday, that's right. After Saturday, then, without getting sixty oh, votes of instead of fifty, yeah. on the tax on the tax deal, uh, they're going to be able to do the fifty votes again, <laughs> and they're going to tag on top of that a health care bill. Uh, when uh, they, then they'll then they'll not get that passed either. Well, this is what that's perfect. About. Yeah, there. You uh, know, the, the, it, the fact is that until they decide that they're going to work. With, uh, uh, with with what we have, with already. what we have, uh, and just try and make it better. Uh, no, it, you know, it can't be repealed. They have to work with what's in. in yeah, I mean, I think even Obama agrees that there are things about Obamacare that need work uh, that he couldn't yeah, accomplish he because he was limited in the in the uh, uh, stuff he could do, and. Well, it's a giveaway to the insurance companies. It, well, it, it, maybe. It, yeah. Stop. Yeah. But I mean, there are. And there, the drug companies. There, uh, are, yeah. There a are trillion things, dollar giveaway. And, and I wouldn't, you know, I'd stop calling it Obamacare because that was never the name of it in the first well, place. Affordable it's the Affordable Care, Care, Care Act. Care. Act. And, and they called it. They, it they called Obama it. Of course it, he did. They called it Obamacare in order to prejudice people. You and know? that's yeah. why I hear that it pisses Trump off. Because he really hates it because it's Obamacare and not Trump care. Well, no, That's no, he, no, he no, no. So he much. he liked he likes Obamacare being Obamacare, but we shouldn't call it Obamacare. He did in the beginning. If we called he, it the Affordable Care Act, which is what it was and what it is, 
uh, you would say. find more people who who are for it. They they did right. a poll once. They asked people, "What do you prefer, the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare?" <laughs> right. And the Affordable Care Act won hands down. Right. Sure. Sounds good to me. Just, yeah. It, before that, it was Romney Care actually. So yeah. 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 Before that, it was Romney. Care. Yeah, a form of it. Yeah. So informally, but you know, still, yeah, uh, based on that idea. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, so this is, we've talked about this before with uh, marketing and this type of an event where Rob doesn't like, uh, doesn't think that Black Lives Matter serves, serves the black community very well. What, what the Republicans did was they didn't want to use the ACA as this thing went through the system. And so they nicknamed it Obamacare to prejudice it, which is exactly what Alex to said. To make people not like it, right, yeah. And it turned, and it turned down rack. and bit of gas. I, I yeah, like, it was Obamacare I, before Trump was around. Marketing is everything well, in this it. world. No, Obamacare definitely before Trump was around. Because yeah, all the Republicans were there before Trump, 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 Trump was around. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing to do with Trump. This is no. back in... This is back in the in the Obama yeah. area. All the all the Republicans saying, "Oh, we don't like this because it's Obamacare." Yeah. Yeah. I mean, twenty years ago or fifty years, whenever when Hillary was trying to do Clinton care, same idea. <laughs> you know? Yeah, like we'll just yeah. name it after somebody we don't like. <laughs> right. right. Well, it's so it's weird, though, isn't it? They shut her down and they told her, "That's it. Forget it now. Don't you know? Talk about it. Don't do it anymore." And then it came up during Obama and, you know, turned into the Affordable Care. And now and well, I, I, a, a lot of yeah. a, a lot of presidents have tried to get some kind of health care passed. And believe it or not, some of them are Republicans. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Nixon f was trying to do it. Yeah. Uh, Nixon actually believed we should have a net. We should have had a national care. Um, wow, really? uh, it's been wow. speculated that FDR made an attempt. FDR when, uh, shortly before did, his death, he had that second Bill of Rights declaration that he delivered. Yes, yes. Did did uh, Kennedy also? No, Kennedy pass? didn't. But uh, did. okay. uh, Eisenhower took a strong, hard look at it in the early fifties. Yeah, I so, mean, uh, I think I think it was Kennedy who wanted a cure for syphilis, but that was a personal <laughs> thing. <laughs> right. And he just selfish. wanted Marilyn Monroe and all that. Yeah, he yeah. wasn't too on the ball. No, it was probably Mrs. Kennedy was looking for the cure. Yeah, Bobby and I, uh, we uh, double teamed uh, Marilyn. <laughs> right, right. Uh, yeah, right. Ooh, they ooh, did. I had never thought about that. Oh, he, before. one night Jack would go over and fuck Marilyn, and the next night I Bobby would go that. over and fuck Marilyn. <laughs> Fucked here with, with uh, uh, even uh, Phil. You 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 want to know something? I mean, I f I find that in certain cases, uh, when I see Marilyn Monroe, I find her adorable. Yes. Uh, but I never ever found her sexy. I think what was that? I think the Did sexiest she ever Phil was. Phil Schmeckel. Uh, yeah. What, what, what was that movie that <laughs> shot down in uh, Coronado, uh, down in uh, San Diego? Some uh, like it hot. Is that was it what it was? Yes. No, that wasn't some like it. Oh, yeah, I think it's, so. Uh, it's it? the Jack Lemon and uh, Tony Curtis. But then they, it, it was. It was. Well, they oh, did. That, they, 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 they did the the, the yes. film I felt she was the most beautiful in was one of her last films, and that was The Misfits. Mm. Uh, and um, uh, Clark what's Gable. what's interesting Clark is uh, she died shortly after that. So did Clark Gable, and so did Montgomery and Cliff. Cliff. Wow. Yeah, all three of them. Um, and what? Yeah. Um, uh, and uh, you know, it's an interesting story. There was a film called The Barbarian, in which, if you can imagine this, John Wayne played Genghis Khan. Oh yeah. Oh my God, you're kidding. And they filmed it in the desert. With uh, Susan Hayward was in it, and so on. They filmed it in the desert of Nevada. And there had been an atomic bomb test. Oh, and yeah. All, and tell about three story, people right? in that film, four people in that film died of cancer. cancer right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Agnes, uh, Agnes Moorhead died also yeah. from that yeah. movie. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. so. she, uh, she but was anyway, in, uh, uh, what I was going to say about Marilyn was that I never found her sexy. You know, I mean, uh, when I was a kid, I'll tell you, I found, I found Natalie Wood sexy. She was my oh, heartthrob yeah. when I was uh, growing up. But Marilyn, I, I never one. found seriously. Hey, you want to talk about tag teaming, wasn't it? Uh, uh, Natalie Wood, wasn't it, with uh, Robert Wagner and uh, Chris? Uh, oh, Chris well, that, that, that's all, Walker, yeah. that's all kind of. 
Oh, that's about her death. So, yeah, that's all speculation there, right? because of her death. But, you know, the terrible story about Natalie Wood was that when she was 15, she was raped yeah. at a movie audition wow. by oh. Kirk Douglas. What? Really? Yes. By Kirk Douglas? Yes. Oh my God! Natalie Wood was that. raped by Kirk Douglas. Wow. Yes, go look it up. Uh, it, 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 when they do documentaries, they kind of have to skirt around who it was, but then they'll show pictures of the marquee Kirk with Douglas Spartacus and so on. He's still alive. He's pretty old now. He's a hundred. Pretty old. He's a hundred years old. Yeah, it's amazing. He's still yeah. alive. But he supposedly brought her over for a supposed audition, and she was raped. Audition. Yep. Cool. That's what they what they say. That saying goes. Uh, only the uh, good die young. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, <laughs> any, anybody like here it. have how many here have uh, Macintoshes? Max. Uh huh. Okay. Well, have fun installing High Sierra. I already did it. Did oh, you? Did you have any problems? Not yet. I had nothing but problems installing it. First of all, it oh, had to goodness. install a new installer helper, and in order to that, I had to go out and go in, and I couldn't get it to do it, and finally it did it, and then it, oh, it, it took forever. It took like an hour for the process wow. to happen, and then when I it finally no did, the thing didn't boot to the right amount of stuff, so finally I had to reboot it, and I got it working, but man, it did was a tough on the And on my other machine, my wife's machine, was very simple, the older machine. Um, yeah. Hmm. But so you this, put it on the mini? No, I put it uh, on my main one. Hmm. I don't oh, know. I, I don't that. notice. Is it? Is there anything I should know about it, Rob? That's better than most of it is uh, photos. The different things you can do with photos and editing. They, it's and they they change the file system. Something yeah. about the file system is different. Really? Oh, yeah, I haven't noticed that. It says here: take a quick tour and see what's new. You know. I haven't really spent any time. I saw the update was there, and I just okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Wow, you guys are just getting that. I got mine a long time ago. It just started, It came out yesterday afternoon. Did, was it just oh, yesterday yeah. it came out? Yeah. Because I just saw it today. So I decided, yesterday afternoon. I decided to upgrade, and it was. I was having all kinds of trouble getting it because it, it on, on my wife's it just installed. On mine, it said you have to install the helper. So then I had to install the helper, and I was having a hard right. time doing that. And then it went. It took me about four tries before I had the helper, and then I could do the uh, do the upgrade. And then when it was fully upgraded, nothing was working right. I had to reboot the machine to get it to come up, you know, and and be like it should. So probably it, because an older machine. Yeah. You know, when I turned my Skype on, you know, earlier, I wanted to make sure. Oh, wait, I hold on a second. Exciting. My wife's my wife's machine is older than mine. Oh, I thought you said hers was the newer one. Hers was the older I, one. Uh, I just mm -hmm. checked the updates, and mine says uh, Mac OS Sierra version ten twelve point six, mm -hmm. uh, and it says no updates are available. I don't remember updating the the system or having anything on automatic. Well, is that it, the that's, new not one? High, that's not that's not high Sierra. It, it would say yesterday. high Sierra. Oh, it's called I, High Sierra. High yeah. Sierra. Okay, that's why. Isn't that a movie? That sounds like a movie. It probably hasn't come out yet, Bill, on our end. No, it is. It is. It, it's, it's, it's out. Available. It's on. Well, uh, I just did. A, I just ran an update, and it wouldn't pull it in. You go to the huh. the app store, and it'll it'll do it. You know. Huh. I'm on. I have a Thunderbolt firmware. Yeah, it did. It didn't pull it in. Yeah. Yeah. Now I bet it, I bet it's really easy to do on the Mini Mac. Is what I'm imagining. But yeah, since well, it, that's the one I just checked it on, and it didn't show that any updates were available. I may have to take yep. the network off the air tomorrow sometime to update the... Uh, well, they send them out in phases, too, so... No, this wasn't in phases, I don't think. I found well, out we haven't got it yet. every one of my machines, you know. Yeah, we haven't got it yet. No, but if you go to that App Store thing... No, it, no, it, it, it's not there. I just tried it. Really? Interesting. Really? Yeah. But you know what happened? They came out with new. Uh, they came out with a new. Uh, they came out with a new iOS for the iPad and the iPhone about a couple yeah. of days ago. They've already got an update. Oh, uh, I got a yeah, uh, need update. Uh, the Alabama Senate runoff. Uh, oh yeah, Judge Mike Moore. 
Yeah. Uh, defeated Luther Strange. Now, Luther Strange was the guy that Trump, that was, backing. Trump was supporting. Trump yeah. Like, yeah. And, uh, the guy that uh, was, uh, who was Bannon. the first part? Uh, Bannon. Bannon, li Bannon uh, like Moore, yeah. Yeah, and uh, uh, so they were saying that, sh uh, that Moore was, uh, uh, or Strange was in bed with, uh, uh, what's his name from the Senate? Uh, McConnell. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, yeah. now they've got it's more answer. It's going to be an anti-McConnell vote morning. They said a couple hours ago that it's going to be, uh, what the hell they say, something about McConnell. Um, ah, shit, I can't remember it. Uh, yeah. Anyway, if it comes back, I'll let you know. Okay. Another Alex moment. <laughs> yeah. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> I had some yeah. of those myself recently. You yeah. know, when uh, you guys were talking about that update on the iPhone, I didn't know I had that until you guys mentioned it. Thank you. Yeah. So now I should look because there's another update on that update? Yeah, there's another update on that update. I haven't looked yet, but I bet if I go to this <laughs> and ask it for the updates, uh, uh, it'll say there's a new one. Let me see here. But uh, you're probably going to have two more updates, and after that, it'll be over. No, uh, no, then they'll be have a new uh, new new iOS. Well, you know it, software you know update. Strange. Let's I've... look. Checking for update. Checking for update. Yeah, it says there's a new update. <laughs> so when you go to, uh, like to the Mac Mini and you and you click on the Apple and you and you go to About Me or not About Me about this computer and then you can click on something that says the software updates. That's right. where you get the update, right? Well, no, you, no, yeah, you, that you, takes you to the store and it pulls it in. No, but okay. you can also go. You can also go to the uh, the app store. Yeah. You know, which is that app thing, and it, it 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 they just have an ad like at the very top. It's almost the first thing that comes up. Let me see here. Uh, let me see here. There are updates, by the way, for something. Yeah, they're but both here, it, it, see right at the at the very top. It says uh, Mac OS High Sierra. Huh. Uh, so uh, uh, that would be the. Uh, it still sounds like a John Wayne movie to me, High Sierra or yeah. something like that. But then there's some well, updates here. Man. I mean, that's that a pretty the, nasty film. You know, people died in that thing. There's, or, or, oh, there's already an Epson uh, update 3.3 for, the I printer? guess. Samsung it, used to printer. call them like ice cream soda or you know, ice cream sundae or something, right? So yeah. then Apple calls it like, you know, some kind of movie talk various national parks on the west coast yeah. oh is that what it really is wow well, i'm still got i'm still on yosemite which is like 10.5 or whatever oh okay because so i just went apple and i didn't know all that thank you oh. i didn't know is that, that because your hardware is really old that's because my well i haven't i have a macbook that's rel pro that's relatively old but it's because i'm using pro tools and every time every time apple mm -hmm. updates their you know to the next yosemite or to the next thing like that it takes about six or eight months before Pro Tools actually works with it. Yeah. <laughs> so By the like, way, let me mention. I was told let me, let, not to even go to the yeah. next level. When I got this, I last 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 December, I accidentally blew out my old, really old MacBook. So I got this one I got from a from a local guy. He put in the Yosemite because I said, well, "What do you?" He said, "What do you? What do you work with?" I said, "I work with Pro Tools." He said, "Oh, well, don't put in Sierra, which had just come out." Uh, because it's probably not going to work. You know? Yeah. Do with Yosemite, and even so, my my input output sort of thing, I have to plug it in. I have to plug it in after I boot it up because otherwise it won't work. I mean, you know, for yeah. some reason or another, there's All been right. enough, enough, enough of, of the tech talk we're, of the we're, folks that do we're, we're losing uh, people here. Never being able to we're connect with people with the Mac, here right? with the tech talk. You know. It's terrible. Uh, it's really, you know, it's yeah. almost screwed up. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, I, by the way, I just want to mention something, if you don't mind me bringing it up, Phil, because you brought it up on Jack's show the other night. I did? Uh, yeah, about the fact that you got some good news about your oh. health. Yeah, the uh, CT scan showed that the prostate uh, hasn't uh, aggressively has, hasn't gotten any more cancer, uh, although they want me to check my bladder now. Yeah. Uh, that there's some thickening on the bladder walls, but that could that could be a lot of things. Yeah. But they, they'll check and see if that's. Well, bladder. next week I go in and get my PSA test to see if it's risen again, uh, yeah. and that I'm all worried about, and I probably shouldn't be because you know. Yeah, even if it rises two or three, you're still normal. Yeah, I'm still normal because at my age, it can be up around a six and be okay. But I mean, I'm, I, I'm, you know me, I just worry about it, right? 
you're handling this thing with you a lot better than I would be handling it. I'd be Me going, too. Yeah, I agree. There's nothing be, I can do, you know. But, <laughs> it doesn't well, mean you can just, just still waiting you go or with whatever. Yeah. Uh, he's I'm a, do he's always me. waiting. Are you still waiting for that treatment or something? No, no. I'm going to have it ripped out in January. And we'll have what ripped out? His My prostate. prostate. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> At our age, you don't you, need that fucking thing anyway. Again? What? Uh, slow time of the year for the store. Oh. Oh, I thought oh. you were going to say it was a slow time at Kaiser. What's the, the downtime? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, if you're an employee, the downtime could be several months. If you're the owner of the store, it could be about your two days. Two days. Yeah. Oh. Oh, oh. I don't think yeah, there's. A, I don't think there's a major do downtime. They do this. Uh, they do this all laparoscopically now, and they do oh, it. There's a, a thing they thing use they called. Call. Uh, what do they call it? There's a new thing called something. Yeah. No, something knife, a cyber knife that they can use. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I know. So that's why they, that's why you don't have to worry so much about incontinence, I guess, right. because they, they, they are so good with these yeah. laser tools that, you know, damage all of the nerves around. Except, Rob, at Kaiser, they don't use that. They use a stiletto. They got a, yeah. they got a and, and we're not talking about the knife. We're talking about the heels. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they shove a stiletto well, heel up your exactly ass, and then yeah. they just move it around a little bit. Or a box cutter. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But anyway, so I'm all panicked, you know, and I and it, uh, it, it, it for all I know, it'll go down. I mean, they do go down too, don't they? They've been known to go down, yeah. huh? Thank yeah. You. I mean, like me, I think mine went up because I had prostatitis. Prost uh, prostatitis. What? I, well, What's that? I, it's an infection. It's an infection. Oh, I see. Let's see here. How many, oh, how many people are we losing I, now? Uh, right. Yeah, it's an infection in your prostate. Yeah, I, I got uh, some Cipro, and uh, things changed for me. Uh, Cipro is an antibiotic. Oh, I've heard of that. That's nasty, yeah. nasty, nasty, nasty shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was could be. But it's heavy well. duty. It's heavy duty antibiotics. I had it for something a while back. Yeah. It's well, Roto Rooter. <laughs> I had it for yeah. six months. So, of Phil, what do you mean? What do you mean you got some? Like the doctor prescribed it? What do you mean you got yeah, some? Not, you you, go you on acquired the it somehow on the black market? Or yeah, something? you go in the corner and you you find <laughs> a guy. Like a little up. Cipro here. <laughs> <laughs> you want to buy a watch? You like a little, little Cipro. You go to the Chinese market around the corner. I, no, I wrote my yeah, doctor Cipro. and told him what I thought, and he said sounds like a good idea, and got the Cipro for me. Yeah, you know what I like about being older? You can go into your doctor and ask for anything, and he'll give it to you. I definitely will. Because yeah. they figure, what harm is it going to do? Like I could go in probably and say, "Will you write me a prescription for heroin?" Sure. What dose do you want? Uh, you know, uh, you'll die anyway. Uh, brown or uh, I don't know what the other ones are. Hey, give me, a, give me, give me a, 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 a 90, a 90 Xanax. Uh, I used up the last one in the last couple of weeks. You know, and they'll give pad. you more. A few fentanyl patches here would be nice. Here. Uh huh. A few fentanyl. Fentanyl, fentanyl patches. patches. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's what we need. Right. You yeah. know, they've tried to eliminate that. There are people that shop different doctors to try to get pain mm. meds. Yeah. And, uh, well, you, uh, don't do you know, you, you, you know what I'm. Big here, on that. Here's a couple of things. Number one, I'm tired. Of, I'm, I'm mad about one thing because it turns out that my doctor really shouldn't have given me the PSA test, and uh, this doctor probably shouldn't be asking me for it either. Because the wisdom now is, if you're over the age of 75, you should not get a PSA test, because if you get prostate cancer at that age it's going to be so slow it's not going to be a problem and exactly. and, and the terror that you go through yeah. uh, at, at that age uh, with something like this is uh, is more uh, it's worse than the than the disease the younger, itself the younger you are the more aggressive the prostate cancer is i think your marjorie had a friend yes who, oh he was uh, like in his early 50s i think yeah at within what months uh, he died a year yeah. Any kind of cancer, the younger you are, the more aggressive it is because your cells grow faster when you're younger. Do you know my wife told me yesterday, I was talking to my ex-wife, Ronnie, was telling me, because she's been doing a lot of studying about cancer since she has it, right? Mm -hmm. And she said that uh, as you get older, cancer has a harder time 
uh, mm -hmm. grabbing on because you you just have a different system altogether. So I think if you get prostate cancer when you're 75, it's go not going to be an aggressive type. Uh, and so they, they just see no benefit to giving a PSA test. And yet here I've got two doctors, a urologist and my GP, giving me at 77 this PSA test. You know, I, I, guess, thought, I yeah. thought at 75 well, there were two things you got off of. You didn't have to have a PSA test for prostate cancer, and you didn't have to do jury duty. Right. And well, I don't know which one's blood, worse, though? to tell it's you the blood, truth. Right? What? The PSA. It's a blood test, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Blood test. Blood test. Yeah. Oh, That's what but I was and, and it's a, and it's very it's imprecise test. and yeah. it doesn't really say anything. I knew a guy who had a nine, Phil, uh, yeah. and he, they gave him a biopsy, did the whole number, and said, "Ah, eh, you don't have prostate cancer." But he had to go through that because they found yeah. a nine. You have a, oh. you have sex the day before you have a uh, the PSA test, and it could raise your PSA right. level. Yeah, and there's another and thing. Another thing, That's you could crazy. have a low low PSA. And you could have prostate cancer. So why right. are they giving these stupid tests? You know? It's an indication that something's going on. But, well, but, I mean, but uh, it's, it, and and you know, when my wife is in a bad mood, it's an indication something's going on. You know, I, I'm sorry, <laughs> I, I don't buy that as a medical uh, device. Uh, yes, John. No, I just had a like a week and a half ago. I had my annual checkup, and I asked my doctor, who, I you know, I don't think I've had a PSA test in a good eight or nine years or something, mm -hmm. or seven or seven years. I can't remember the last time I had it. And I was like, you know, wait a minute. Why haven't I had that? She said, I, I just don't think it's very accurate. And I don't think it's necessary. You know, if you want one, we can give you one. But I'm not sure what the results, whether we'll want to do it. I'm like, well, if you think it's nice. And now, you know, uh, give me, you know, he, she gave me the rundown. The, the medical that community. Had this or that yeah. symptom. I had no symptoms. The, 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 medical, right. the medical community <laughs> is very mixed on this particular test. Yeah. Well, she's very, she's not in, she's not, she says it's not, you know, it, it too many, too many false And by the way, folks, it. if you're listening out there, the worst cancers you can get, you can never tell about ahead of time by a blood test or anything else. I mean, my yeah. wife, who ex-wife, who has pancreatic cancer, the worst cancer you can get, by the way. Oh, um, yeah. uh, this, one of the reasons it's the worst is you can't catch it in its early stages. There are just no warning signs. Losing yeah. weight. I lost. That was my father's today. problem. Well, I yeah. lost weight, and what I'm doing now is I'm eating lots of bread and stuff trying to keep the weight up. I don't want to lose any more, and I want to make sure that I didn't lose 60 pounds because I've got something horrible happening inside of me, right. you know? Right. <laughs> I remember that movie with Burt Reynolds. You ever see a movie called The End? Yeah, 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 yeah. I know that movie, Dom DeLuise. It starts out with a guy with with Burt Reynolds being told by his doctor, "You've got a terminal cancer," and then it's a comedy, uh, and he uh, uh, and he looks at the doctor and he said, "And I thought I was losing all this weight and looking really good." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a good-looking corpse. That, yes, Mike. That Burt Reynolds movie. Well, my, that, Mike, uh, Mike has his hand up. My dad, uh, he went to the doctors today. Everything looks good. He gets a uh, thing from the jury. Uh, do jury uh, jury duty? Yeah. He's taken to the courthouse. It's okay. So he walks up there, comes back laughing. He goes, Mr. Allen, you're just too damn old to do jury duty. Yeah. Thank well, you for coming. I'm sorry. That, uh, it's amazing that they tell you you're too old because you, you, if you, like I'm 75, when I hit 75, I, you don't have to do jury duty anymore. And, but it said if you want to, if you want to, you can, but you don't have to, you know. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, like I want to do out. jury duty. Fuck you. you know? my, my dad, he laughed at me. He goes, okay, bye. Goodbye. Yeah. This is how much time I start taking me out to lunch. Yeah. Right. <laughs> out you go. Go out and have a nice lunch. But oh, anyway, dad, getting getting the, back the, to this whole this whole thing the about the 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 health care bill is that the you know I think that the Republicans really showed how ineffective they are. You know that they you know they, they couldn't even get something passed that they were passionate about. Thank no, God they didn't well, get a pass. Maybe now. doing the right thing because they didn't have a plan. 
and they're not just well no going- they're not doing the right thing a couple of people you know the woman from alaska and mccain and uh what's his name uh uh, Tr- Ted uh Cruz. T- no no the other one uh oh, Rand, Rand. Rand paul they're the ones who did good those are the ones who voted their conscience and said well, fuck the rest <laughs> of our party line I- Maybe the other ones would have as well, uh, but they figured they didn't have to Cruz, expose Yeah, Cruz themselves. was considering it, as right. was, uh, I'm trying to remember who the other guy is. Uh, there was one other guy, and, and, and they were considering it, but Alaska. they never... What? The lady from Alaska. Well, the lady yeah. from Alaska, but there's another guy. Um, Dean, uh, oh, uh, another guy. Yeah. Anyway, uh, they were going to probably... Was it the Graham? <laughs> They were probably going to do it, but didn't do it if it, if they didn't have to. Because, you know, you're, you're jeopardizing yourself with party loyalty there, which shouldn't be. But, you know, that does happen. So, Alex, what's going to happen now, though? Like, who's it up to now to, to propose well, something? Uh, you know, I think that what, what, what's got to happen is everybody's got to sit down and say, OK, we got Obamacare. Now, let's work on this thing and get it more effective, get it to work right, get it... Tweak tweak what we have. Well, it isn't even a matter of tweaking. That that, that there's a dichotomy and that uh, the left and the right are going in two totally separate uh, directions on health care, and you really can't... Uh, how could you get them to sit down and work with it when you got one half of the Senate that has uh, no reason to want to deal with that, and then the other half of the Senate that wants single payer health care? So it's up to the Senate. Why now, can't they right? both just say what we want to do is we want to give some form of health care to to every American, especially the real health care, real health care the crap they've been trying to pass yeah, off. Yeah, I mean, uh, and, and uh, not that the states are deciding. When you're because letting when you're letting insurance market. companies yeah. run the this table when you when you're allowing insurance companies to run the table on this thing, this is like <clears throat> going to the IRS and having them do your taxes for you. Right. Well, you know, well, I, I saw a interview which you can uh, with, do by the way. <laughs> well, I, I saw an interview with this guy, and he said he went and he investigated in o- Ohio, and he talked to a bunch of people that conservatives, Trump conservatives, yeah. that uh, like uh, uh, Medicare, but yeah. don't like uh, the Affordable Care Act. And the reason they like Medicare is they feel that people have actually paid into it and that uh, that there aren't any freeloaders. Now, we all know that there's that we're, freeloaders is a loaded uh, statement. But oh, yeah. well, on the it, other it's hand... A, it's a loaded statement. And let me, let me say, Phil, can I just interrupt you if you don't yeah. mind? That sure. that the people who are are going to need health this kind of health care the most are the very people who can't afford it. So the, <clears throat> those are going to be freeloaders. But if we all pay into it as part of our, right. you know, like Medicare, like you pay for Medicare right. all your life, right? Well, yes. uh, uh, that that could take care of those people. I mean, there are certain people who just can't afford it. Do we call them freeloaders because they can't afford it? It's 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 not a good thing to call them freeloaders. It's just people who don't have it. was loaded. But this is a very interesting phenomenon. If you're going to have health care like a single payer and and you're getting the support of a Medicare-style plan, the problem is with the young people. With the young people, you used to be able to buy major medical. Can't buy it anymore. But major medical said that if you had some thing like a broken arm or uh, cancer or something, you you had coverage. But if uh, for the minor things that uh, might happen, a scratch, a rash, uh, uh, you didn't have uh, coverage and you had to pay for that out of pocket. And so maybe if you cover young people under a major a major medical plan mm-hmm. uh, and and then those who want private health insurance can buy it and they and let them buy it competitively across state lines like the Republicans want and then also have the third option which is uh, a Medicare uh, that look, you could pay look, a higher uh, you, rate you, you and I Medicare over, over, over the younger. weekend Phil was nice enough to spend some time with me <clears throat> to try and shoot out shoot some take care of some problems I was trying to fix, and I thank you for that, Phil. Oh, well, sure. We got into discussions about just the things we're talking about here, 
And I just think that if we were to cut back on our military appropriations, which is just way out of hand, you know. The hell are you saying? It, yeah, it's way out of hand. We could, we could take that and probably is wind it? Up, huh? Yeah. You know, we, we, we it, 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 no, but we, we could use that money to turn around and take care of everybody's health care needs. And this is a Republican government. There's no way they're going to. Well, right, well right, you know, right. why, well, why is it such a difficult task for us? And yet every major industrialized nation in the world has single payer health care, with the exception of only us and China. Why the communists didn't come up with single payer, I have no idea. It makes no, no has sense. has any money. But, but, but <laughs> yeah, they, I they for the... But, but, well, well, but you know how... They are just, working you know, on it. They are working you know, on it. Well, Phil was talking about some guy interviewing some people and all this, so I don't think I sound that I, I, I couldn't hey, remember the guys no, no, no. had curly That's hair. That's okay, because <laughs> I'm going to sound like that now maybe, but I'm hearing from some guys somewhere that, like, Medicare, 80%, might be the way that it all should go you know i don't know what's going to happen with 20 sure. percent of it but good because we're never we're never going to get all the way 100 percent because of capitalism in this country and because they have a taste of what it's like to make money they if you're a wager wait 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 wait, 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 wait uh, is 80%. Uh, tony has his hand up for the first yeah. time this evening yeah you know what i was going to say too uh like even with, like with social security they shouldn't really cap it. Like, say if somebody makes a lot of money, the wealthy people, you know what? They shouldn't have to hit a certain limit. You should just keep paying into it. Well, that, that so is, can... that's the other question about Social Security. There is a cap on Social Security every year. As soon as you pay like something like $10,000 yeah, into uh, Social Security, that's it. So if you're, if you're making $100,000 a week, you've paid that off in a week, all right? Yeah. Uh, the, the point is that there should be no cap on Social Security. Yeah, I would take you a know, cap off, it, and, 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 off. And that could take care of some of the Medicare problems that make everybody have uh, single-payer health care. Just a matter <laughs> of uh, taking out you know, Social Security every week. And, and now, you know what I would do, Alex? I would take the cap off. And, you know, I wouldn't mind then for the wealthy if we're going to tax them a little more for Social Security, like take more of their money. Then maybe, maybe give them a little bit of a break to bring their money from overseas back here. Maybe we'll save you a couple of percent to take the money that you have overseas banks to bring it back. You know Minnesota. something, I got to tell you, truthfully, a rich person doesn't mind if he's paying a little more in taxes. It, it doesn't make a... a, a really? Wit, I, I don't think, you know, I mean, so, let's say... Thank you. Well, let's say... Uh, no. Let's say, let's, say, no. let's say you're no. a Kardashian and we raise your taxes 10%. Do you really think, think you're going you're gonna to feel terrible about that? You think, think you're greedy then. You, well, uh, can I just say okay. one thing about the Medicare? Yeah. If, if you, uh, for instance, if a younger person wanted to pay a higher rate of Medicare contribution mm -hmm. to be able to take advantage of the coverage yeah. while they're working, so let's say you're a wage earner and you're and you're earning money and yeah. instead of paying uh, what a couple hundred dollars like you do uh, on Social Security, uh, you're a wage earner and you want this kind of coverage, you, maybe you could pay eight hundred dollars and uh, and and then you get that coverage. Well, I don't know. I, all I'm saying is there's got to be a plan they can come up with. And hey, but where's it going to come from, though, Alex? Who's, well, who who's knows? Be, who knows? We don't know. We have to just wait and see what's going to yeah, happen. Yeah, it's going to come from countries. Yes, yeah, wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is what I don't. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Look, Renee look, is talking. You, Hold on. Oh, sorry. But we've got 25, 26 other countries that have better healthcare systems than we do. So it's, if you want examples of the way we should set ours up. Oh, pick the top five and go look at those countries. Yeah, I don't think that's the issue. I think the issue is the strength of the uh, the American Medical Association. That they're uh, not going to let it happen. Uh, right. They're, the lobbying going on there. The lobbying. Um, that's what I was thinking, lobbying, right? Just like the way we knew that cigarettes were killing everybody and it was cancerous and all that, but because of the tobacco lobbyists. Right. Everyone was smoking and killing themselves, right? Well, there or was a, a smoke camel. Uh, yes, quickly, John Rockwell. We got to go here, but yeah. what? Oh, oh, uh, just a quickie, just a quickie on that. Uh, I was talking about this tonight with a friend at the bar. Uh, I was at, and he said, if you look, one of the one of the most popular 
um, health plans around is the one that Switzerland does. I don't know that much about it, but he said one of the things that they do is basically the government makes deals with the drug companies and the and the hospital thing as to they make they decide what what gets well paid. that that was the problem that we had and i gotta go but well, that's the problem we have with medicare part no, d is that people. that the 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 the, the, <laughs> gov- oh. the the government wasn't allowed to negotiate with the drug companies He's and, and that that's a big problem hey and listen thanks error. everybody thanks to uh, we just oh. lost renee uh, thanks, Tony. Thanks, Phil. Thanks, Charlene. Rob, you're the best. Glad you're up and running again. Uh, uh, Stud21, Mike57572. I don't know what any of that means. Uh, Kevin, yeah, right. thank you. John Rockwell, and of course, uh, Brian. Thank you all for joining me tonight. I really appreciate it. Why don't you just wave goodbye, okay? Okay, there they go. A oh, cute bunch, aren't they? Yes, they are. And that's it for me tonight. Uh, that's about all she wrote. Uh, the ramp, the uh, ramble. The intersection is next over most of this same gabnet uh, melange. Uh, that's the second time I've used that term this week. And uh, we'll uh, we'll be back again. Uh, um, uh, the intersection is next, and after that, connections. And we'll be back again tomorrow night. Same time, same station, in life. In the meantime, if you see her. Tell her I love her, okay? I had to look down at the button. Tell her I love her, all right? Okay. Bye.